Good morning. Would you please stand for our opening song? to praise and glorify your name. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our midst. Minister to our hearts and minds as we lift our voices in song, listen to your word read and expounded so that we will leave this house loving you more and serving you better. We ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord, amen. Please be seated. Well, welcome to those of you who braved the cold come out this morning. Uh, I'm always thankful that my car starts in this weather. And we welcome those who are viewing online. I don't know if the camera can do this, but uh, Jim and Chris, we miss you. And we're waving to you. So let's wave to Jim and Chris. For the... Wave again, okay. <laughs> Pastor and Chris, we miss you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Pastor's been laid low with COVID, and uh, they're watching us online. Jim, we love you. We pray for you, and we pray you'll be back with us soon. Uh, in the pew, someplace, probably toward the center aisle, is a black book. Somebody hold up a black book for visitors. Right, there you go. Please fill it out. Register your presence. But also, if you need prayer or want a pastoral visit or something, please note that so that we can 
minister to you. There are a lot of announcements in the bulletins, really interesting bulletin this week. I just want to highlight several. First of all, annual congregational meeting is tonight at 6 p.m. Now look, I know really important game starts at 5.30. Tape it. Uh, we may actually give highlights and scores if you want uh, during, the game, during the meeting. But uh, everyone's welcome to the annual congregational meeting. Uh, only members can vote, but it's really important. We have a lot of things we want to talk about. We want to talk about, first of all, how successful our giving was last year vis-a-vis -vis our expenses. We praise God for that. We don't take it for granted, but we also want to talk about our plans for the future. We've got a few reports you want to hear. Uh, talk about our search for our youth, director of youth ministries. That's important. Buildings and Grounds has a report. So, and we're going to elect officers. So please come uh, tonight for the annual meeting. Women, if you've not attended the Women's Connections, consider coming this Thursday um, for the morning Bible study on Psalms. You will be blessed. And then please note the baby shower this coming Saturday for Shannon Renke. Details for that are in the bulletin. And still another opportunity for ladies is the Mosaic Mini Prayer Retreat on February 10th. Uh, you know, ladies, you're doing well. Guys, we've got to get something going for the men here. Uh, it's, you know, they're putting us to shame. Now, we do have the men's prayer breakfast, uh, and that, that uh, we're really appreciative of. And finally, we're sponsoring another Red Cross blood drive on Monday, February 5th. This is a way for us to give back to the community and around us. A lot of the people who come aren't church people, but they're community people. And so we ask for prayers for that because we actually have an opportunity to contact and talk to people in our community who otherwise wouldn't come to the church. So this is really important. We see this as a really important community service. Enough of that. Worship team, can you come back up and lead us to the throne of God? Would you please stand again as you are able?
The scripture reading this day is Psalm 62, verse 5 through 12. <clears throat> yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. 
Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath. The highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain in hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love, and you reward everyone according to what they have done. Thanks be to God. Ushers, can you please come forward for the offering? Tis the look that mounted Peter, tis the face that Stephen saw, tis the heart that wept with Mary, can alone from idols draw, captivated by his beauty. Amen, amen. Crown him our unrivaled king. Thank you, Casey and Faith. 
That is uh, beautiful. Thank you, worship team. Uh, again, you've led us right to God's throne. Uh, John and Kay are coming forward. Uh, they're about to leave, God willing, for Cambodia. First, we'd like to do this. This is a sign in Cambodia. Uh, a greeting. You have to speak into the microphone. <laughs> Nobody can hear you. This, this is a sign of greeting in Cambodia. The higher you go, the more reverence you mean to the point up here is reserved for Buddhists, Buddhist monks. But we do, we do this to you all, showing our great respect and love for you. Right, and you're gonna show us a quick yeah. film clip? She, after she, she yes. wanted to say something quickly. I just wanna say that thank you for your past support. And um, you know, when a believer goes to a country where there are millions, millions of people who have never heard the name Jesus, it creates a real urgency in your spirit to tell everybody you can find there. So thank you again. Yeah, we thank you. Yeah, we prepared a short video. Uh, it's about the plight of girls in Cambodia and what we do to help that. Not all girls are like this, but a lot of the, Cambodia is one of the poorest countries in the world, and if they're poor. Uh, or actually live out in the provinces, they have a, 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 a tough road to hoe to have a successful, meaningful career. So, Jonathan? I think he's already, I think he's already shown the slides. Oh, here it is again, okay. Wow. Where's the beginning? You missed it. We saw it. Good evening, my name is Yunu. Today I read Unit 1. Ra ra. Ah, 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 Goodbye, I love you. Amen. I'm going to pray for you guys in a second, but, you know, John and Kay, God willing, uh, are leaving this week for Cambodia. No one who knows this couple has any doubt that in their hearts are with this ministry with these young girls who are saved from being trafficked or homeless. Uh, without embarrassing them about their age, <laughs> it's safe to say that many of us would be grateful for the strength to serve the Lord as they do when we reach your tender age. Thank you. Just, just a plane trip is a tough part. Yeah, well, that's the next line I have here. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> the flight to Cambodia is a minimum of 23 hours long. So uh, join me as we pray for strength for their travel and then their recovery so that they can minister to their second family. We may be here next Sunday as I just made reservations next Sunday night that plane leaves at quarter of midnight. So depending upon our preparedness, we may be here. Okay. Heavenly Father, we lift up John and Kay in this crucial ministry. Their hearts are not only for providing a better physical life for these young lives, but also to introduce each and every one of them to the source of life the Lord Jesus Christ. Open the hearts of the girls and indeed anyone else they have conversation with to allow the Holy Spirit to witness to Jesus. We look forward to what you will do through John and Kay.
Keep them healthy so they can serve you in a place where you are not known by the majority of Cambodians. And then bring them back safely so we can rejoice with them over what you have accomplished. We ask this in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you. Thank you okay. for your, your support. I just want to have that much strength when I'm that old. That's all I got to say. I'd love to be able to do a 23 hour flight <laughs> and live to tell about it. So continue with me in prayer. Father, if it were not for your word and the Holy Spirit, we would be tempted to despair as we look around the world. There are ongoing wars and new conflicts erupt every week. We're divided as a nation and as a people have forgotten you. The elites want to reduce the world's population in the name of humanity. But you, sovereign God, are still on the throne. As in days past, men have tried to usurp your rule, but you are a rock. We will not be shaken. Holy Spirit, strengthen us that we may continue to trust at all times in our refuge. Father, many of our folk in need of your healing touch, we pray for Kathy that she'd be strong enough to continue her treatments. Heal our pastor and restore him to us. There are others we can name who need your healing touch. Sandra, Tom, Kay, and others in our congregation. There are extended family members like Chrissy's father and Ed's relatives who need your power in their lives. Holy God, none of us here or watching online are free from concern. We all need you to work in our lives and the lives of our loved ones. We ask in the powerful name of Jesus to meet all these needs for your glory. We rejoice in the opportunity to be part of your worldwide work. As we've prayed for John and Kay, we pray for the ministry of our other missionary partners. In particular today, we ask your blessing on Mark and Brenda Brown and their leadership and evangelistic work among university students. We continue to pray for your healing touch on their granddaughter. As we heard from the psalmist, we wait in silence for God only, for our hope is from him. Now, as Reverend Yusino opens your word, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds to receive what we need to live lives worthy of our calling. We ask in the holy and precious name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Cool. You're up. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Good Preach the word. Good morning, church. Uh, it's such a, a privilege to be here with you. I'm here with my wife, Chrissy. And Pastor Jim, you better get, get better soon. No more cruising for you and Chris. Right? <laughs> we had a, a wonderful dinner with, uh, with Pastor Jim and Chris just last month at, at the university and uh, sat at their table with, along with a, a couple other pastors and, and families and just had a great time. I've met uh, Pastor Jim a few times. In fact, I was at a, an Evangelical Free Church conference in California when I just started, uh, I'll tell you my story in a, in a minute, but just started at Trinity in May. And in June, I was at the national conference, and I walked into just a, a, a random, uh, I was interested in it, but a random workshop, sat down next to a person, and at the break, you know, we kind of shook hands, and where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, I know. And I, oh, you're from Lincolnshire. Oh, I said, you're the new Lee Eklov. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's been a while since I was, I've been around the area, but uh, it's so... Uh, he laughed, and, and we chuckled and, and, hit, and, and had breakfast here in, uh, in the area when we both returned. It's a privilege to be here. I'm a, currently the director of church relations at Trinity, and prior to that, a 32-year pastoral background. And I started eight years as a software engineer, so my 20s were, were spent in the United States Air Force. I had the privilege of serving as an officer in the Air Force, and uh, so glad to, to, to be a veteran. And uh, about age 29, God tapped me on the shoulder. I was doing some work at a, a church in Omaha, Nebraska, where I was stationed, and, and he got my attention. 
and uh, thought, okay, you're working on some pretty crucial military secrets at the time. Uh, let's, let's, let's work on something a little more important and a little less secretive. And I did. So it took a couple year transition and found myself in, in local ministry. I'm here with, with Chrissy, and we're so pleased to be here. Um, she told me, this, this part of my sermon is the only unscripted part, and I'm Italian, I have a, tan, a, 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 a habit of wandering, so she said, just be quick on your intro, be quick. <laughs> I could make that a half hour, right? I could. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got some scripted stuff about you in here today, too, so I'm always surprised when I tell a Chrissy story. Um, I love the church. I love the church. I love working in the church, for the church, with the church, and I love Scripture. When I think about Scripture as it paints a picture of the church, and maybe I'll ask you the question, what, what part of the Bible do you think of in Scripture when it talks about the church? What book in the Bible? The book of Acts, right? That's kind of the story of the, church, the story of the early church, how the church started. What the church looked like. The book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles might not be the best title for it. We'll talk about that later. But in, just by way of, of, of summary, we'll be kind of parked in Acts chapter 4 today. But by way of summary up to that point, some pretty catalytic things happened in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, and Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 2, uh, the church was essentially born on the day of... Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, some pretty wild things happened, right? You remember, a phenomenon occurred that Jesus instructed his followers to stay in Jerusalem and wait for his obvious next step. And so that's what they did. They were huddled. They were unsure of, of what move to make next. And while they were huddled, while they were nervous, while they were afraid of the unknown future, while they were gathered, suddenly the Holy Spirit blew through the, through the room with the wind Along with the wind came a fire. And the fire splintered off into what was described as cloven tongues of fire that hung over each of the believers' lives, all 120 of them, all of them. Cloven tongues of fire above, like little, maybe I shouldn't say little, but big, big lighters <laughs> above their heads. That's, that's, that would be pretty interesting if that happened here this morning, wouldn't it? I don't know if you've ever thought, maybe some of us think we, we understand what that means, or that group of, of people that uh, uh, particularly may, might land a little bit more uh, on the tongues of fire arena, but I don't know if you've thought deeply about what, what maybe that, that means, the, the flames hovering above everyone's head. Well, Luke is tapping into a repeated Old Testament theme where God would show up in the wind, ruach in the Hebrew, pneuma in the Greek, and also in the fire. God would show up in the fire. For instance, at Mount Sinai, when Moses went up to receive the Ten Commandments and come down with instruction from God, Mount Sinai was lit on fire, the top, by, and it revealed God's presence on that place. Or, or how about the pillar of fire over the tabernacle? The tabernacle was the temporary, the mobile temple at the time, the 40 years. A pillar of fire was consistently over that tab tabernacle, and that's the place where heaven met earth. God's presence was in that place. Healing occurred in that place. Forgiveness was given in that place. God met man in that place. But now, rather than the flames representing God's massive one presence, his presence was a personal presence in the new temple over each one of the followers of Jesus's, of, of the followers of Jesus. They were little flames suggesting that the new temple was the body of Christ. It was a personal presence, a personal power where forgiveness is given and forgiveness is received and healing happens and God's power is in those people's lives. We're, and, and we are recipients of that. It was like at the moment, on the day of Pentecost, little, it was suggesting that, that these people, the beginning of the church, were the mini mobile tabernacles or temples of God to take the power of God from that day on, and thus was born the church. That's us. We get to tap into that story. But now, and, and, and so we, we could be picture the flames over the tabernacle. Now Jesus is saying, I've got a better plan. 
He splinters the flames off, and he says, each of you followers of me are now many mobile temples. Go impact the world. But now the fire, rather than the flames representing God's massive presence, these new, these new mini flames represented the new temple of Jesus. Well, that was chapter 2 in the book of Acts. But by chapter 3, the flames had, were long gone. However, the, the fire on each of their heads moved to their hearts, and it, was, it more than just remained. It burned bright. It burned bright hot it burned bright white hot in their hearts in fact they had burning hearts for god and his mission and that was the beginning of these believers taking the church forward they were released from their huddling their secret gathering in the room and said now start my mission well why do i use the, the word burning hearts which will follow along with us the entire message this morning it's important because each of one of us wants to fan the flames of our heart for God, don't we? It's a flame that, that often goes untendered. It's a flame that could easily get distracted by side missions or side, distra- side uh, you know, concern in our life. Well, if you remember the phrase burning hearts, if you remember the end of Luke's volume one, which was all, is also known as the Gospel of Luke, I don't know if you know, but the Gospel of Luke and Acts was meant to be volume one, volume two together one writing what at the end of the gospel of luke two disciples unaware of the resurrection were taking a journey to a nearby village called emmaus the walk to emmaus remember the two disciples they were unaware of the resurrection at this time and uh, all of a sudden jesus shows up although they did not recognize him they were forlorn they were sad they were disappointed as you can imagine their mission of the last three three and a half years just ended on a cross and they saw the body taken down dead so they're walking they they're they're leaving they're going to emmaus jesus joins them they do not recognize him and he begins explaining scripture to them in the context of what just happened on the cross these are good jewish boys they know that what we now call the Old Testament. And Jesus is putting the pieces together in the context of his life, his ministry, his death, and now resurrection. And then Jesus disappears. He just disappears. Now, once they realized it was Jesus, they said to one another, Luke chapter 24, verse 32, they said, Did not our hearts burn within us? as he talked with us on the road and explained scripture to us. As I said in the beginning, I love the church and I love scripture and the two belong together. Does that happen when we unpack God's word, when you unpack God's word on Monday morning in your quiet time, on Sunday during the message, together, independent, does your heart burn when you put the pieces together of God's word in the context of our life and in with the resurrection a risen Jesus in mind that's the potential every time we we have every time we open up scripture for our hearts to burn white hot and so the disciples hearts were burning white hot in chapter 3 and what happens in chapter 3, Peter and John go to the... I'm summarizing so that we can land in chapter 4 here. So Peter and John go to the temple complex during the hour of prayer. They're still good Jewish boys. They're going to the assigned Jewish time of prayer. They're going to pray. It was an ordinary day for them. They were doing ordinary things in ordinary ways with ordinary people. And God shows up, guess what, in an extraordinary way. And I'd love to stop right now and for each of us to consider, to ponder, what would it look like for each of us to live our lives that way? Doing ordinary things in ordinary ways with ordinary people. I feel pretty ordinary. I don't know about you. You can opt out of that if you feel extra special, you know, extraordinary this morning, but I most days feel pretty ordinary. And I wonder what would happen if I took that ordinariness with a burning heart and expected God to live my day out in extraordinary ways, for him to show me extraordinary opportunities to represent him. I wonder what would happen. 
And so ask yourself the same question. What would happen when the alarm clock goes off Monday morning? What could God do if you expected extraordinary, an extraordinary day with him tomorrow throughout the week? Something for us to consider. Well, that's what happened with Peter and John. They were doing ordinary things. And a man who was disabled from birth, begging for money, asks for money. They're on their way into the temple. They saw, and they said, we have no money, but essentially we have Jesus. Would you like him? And he says, yes. And he's healed. And he gets up and he starts. It's a beautiful passage of Scripture. You can almost feel his bones strengthening as they help him up. And he starts to, to dance. And he's kind of making, he's attracting a lot of attention. He's dancing, he's shouting, he, and, and, and he's a lot of attention. And, and wouldn't you know it, Peter, who just gave his first message in chapter 2, starts preaching again. I think Peter got the preaching bug already by chapter 3. He starts preaching again. Now, all this sounds exciting. We've talked about chapter 2, we've talked about chapter 3. All of this sounds exciting, right? This is where the backlash begins. This is where the persecution of the church begins. And did you know for the following, following this episode, for the next 300 years, the church of Jesus would experience some of the worst persecution in history. Historians say that there were 10 waves of persecution, starting with Caesar Nero in 67 AD, all the way to Diocletian in 303 AD. And some of you might know that history. Church historians certainly do. But, but persecution began. Where did it begin? Right here in chapter 4. If you'd open up your scriptures with me, I'm going to read chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. This is following Peter and John's episode of healing the disabled man in the temple. Chapter 4, verse 1. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking, while he was preaching. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. If you, you know, the Sadducees were quite against that the, theologically, right? Number, uh, verse 3, they seized Peter and John because it was evening. They put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who grew to about 5,000. Wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't that be extraordinary? If we lived our day in an ordinary week, and, and the next week, 5,000 people wanted to follow us in our lives. Hey, can you blog a little bit more about what's happening in your life? I kind of like that white, burning white hot heart. Verse 5, the next day the rulers, the elders, the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the others of the high priest family. You might recognize those names as the same names having been in the room with Jesus who condemned him. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, by what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then please, just know this. I love it. He's getting very bold, isn't he? Know this, all you people of Israel. It's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that, is the man, that, that this man stands before you healed today. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which had become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name in heaven given to mankind by which you must be saved. And that verse 12, by the way, is a little phrase taken from a, a slogan used only for, for, uh, for Caesar. And these bold fishermen turned preacher men said, you know what, we like that phrase, but we're going to use that phrase for Jesus. No other name in heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. The scripture reading today in Psalm 62, I love that chapter, talks all about the only thing that we're, the only, the only source of our salvation is God. Well, that experience that, that Peter and John had was first it was the the first as I said the first uh, recorded persecution post Jesus. Well, as they began to be increasingly persecuted, how did they maintain a burning heart in the face of op opposition? What gave them the courage to face a formidable foe with limited resources? What made the difference? It's maybe a good question for us 
in our families, in our culture, in our world today? What will help maintain a burning heart in the face of opposition? In one word, prayer. Prayer. It's been said by uh, Hudson Taylor, I believe, who was quoted as saying, when we work, we work. When we pray, God works. No aspect of our Christian life is more essential and crucial to our personal growth and, and health than spending time with God. We, never, we are never taller than we're on our knees. We're never stronger than we confess our weaknesses. We're never bolder than when we are quiet before God in private. All those things happen as we communicate with God. Now, the, the apostles, you know, in several places in chapter 2, again in chapter 4, and again in chapter 6, they list studying of God's word and prayer as, as two of the most important aspects of their ministry. They became people of power as a result of their study of God's word and connecting it in context through prayer to a risen Jesus. The result, burning hearts. Fanning the flame of their burning hearts. Well, how, how do we maintain? What can we take from them in terms of maintaining burning hearts in our own lives? Number one, burning hearts draw near. If you are interested in maintaining, fanning the flame of a burning heart, draw near to God. Burning hearts draw near to God on a regular basis. Upon Peter and John's release from the chief priests and elders, Luke states, in verse 24, he says this, When they heard the report, all the believers, their, their congregation, got together and lifted their voices together in prayer. That was their first instinct. Praise God. John and Peter are released. Let's pray. Now, this was not an off-the-cuff prayer meeting. The whole community joined together in prayer. They needed God more than they needed each other even. They were not first trying to get through to God. They were opening themselves up to God who was trying to get through to them. One of the first uh, Bible verses that I memorized years and years ago was James 4, verse 8. James 4, 8 says this, Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You know, we need God more than he needs us. I have to remind myself that almost daily. I'm, I'm more than happy on most days to help God out in his mission. And God says, oh, thanks for being so eager. Remember he told that to, to Moses at age 40 when Moses thought he was ready. He said, ah, we're going to sideline you for, four, for 40 years. I love your hearts for Cambodia. And, you know, if you're on Moses' track, tr track record, is, is it, it's uh, John and Kay? If you're on Moses' track record, you're just getting started. You are just getting started. So thank you. Thank you for, for your example of, of burning hearts. Of burning hearts. We need God more than he needs us. St. Saint, Saint Augustine, the church father and theologian, described prayer as a man in a hapless boat who throws a, a rope at a rock. The rock provides the needed stability and security and life for the helpless man. When the rock is lassoed, it's not the man pulling the rock to the boat, although it may appear that way. It's pulling the boat to the rock. Jesus, as we just sung and as Scripture told us, Jesus is the rock. And we throw the rope through prayer. So for a moment, just re reflect. Maybe as we look back on 2023 as a whole, reflect on your prayer life. How much time did you spend on your concerns versus seeking God and his presence to join him in his mission? God is interested in our concerns. He is. He knows our heart. But mostly he's waiting for us to open up so that he can join us. Not in where we're at, but we can join him in where he is at. Burning hearts draw near to God. Number two, burning hearts experience God's power. Two characteristics dominated the apostles' prayer meetings. And if you read the whole book of Acts, it was certainly this, this episode in Acts chapter 4, two characteristics dominated their prayer meetings. One is God's presence. Two is God's power. Presence and power. Power comes with presence. Presence comes with power. They go hand in hand. And in fact, that makes sense because God promised that to us at the very beginning of the book of Acts, didn't he? What is Acts chapter 1, verse 8? Many of you have probably memorized it. 
you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Is it any wonder the evil one wants to keep us from praying? To distract us. Why don't we pray? You know, when, when, we, when, excuse me, when we don't pray, Satan has won the battle. When we pray, the presence and power of God are unleashed. And the book of, of Acts, maybe it's a, it would be better to, to entitle the book instead of the Acts of the Apostles, maybe the better title is the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because it records one example of, after another of God answering through his presence and power, answering prayer. The power and presence of God were unleashed. Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 8, we read it. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, filling, burning white hot. This is, these are important moments for us as followers of Jesus. For those disciples in Jerusalem, they experienced the power of God in a very tangible way, didn't they? And they regularly tapped into that. Verse 31, after this prayer, listen to this, the meeting place shook. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened then? Then they preached the Word of God with boldness, with more boldness. Now, I don't know what the shaking was all about. Perhaps it was thunder in the sky. Maybe it was a tremor from the earth. Or maybe it was just the devil, the, the devil shaking in his boots. You know, I don't know what the shaking was all about. But whatever caused it, the shaking gave to those, God gave to those early disciples, it, it, it gave them a sense of unshakableness in terms of their relationship with God. The shaking gave those early disciples a sense of God's presence and his powers. It's as if to say the more God shook things up, the more unshakable they became. Isn't that incredible? Do you ever think about that when the things that shake you in your life right now? You know, as, as uh, parents to adult children, we think, oh, good, our job is done. How, how come it never feels like it's done? <laughs> we have adult kids, and we're so proud of all of them, and and uh, yet I, I say kind of tongue-in-cheek, I, I, I tell pa parents of adult children, so you'll, you'll get this. I always say, you know, a person is never as, uh, never as happy as their, is only as happy as their least happiest child. <laughs> because we, we're just always shaken up by what's out of our control, maybe decisions, daily decisions by our adult children or your employer or the news. Things shake us up. In all this shaking, is there ever a sense that we, sh we feel unshakable because we sense the power and the presence of God through it all? Does that make sense? It, wouldn't that be a wonderful way to approach our, the things that shake us up? What does it look like for, for God to take the shaking things of, in our world and point it toward his presence and his power? Burning hearts draw near to God. Burning hearts experience God's power. And number three, burning hearts share God's goodness freely and regularly. You know, the early disciples prayed, grant that your slaves may speak your message with complete boldness. That was in, in verse 29. Notice what happened when they, when they prayed that. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak God's message with boldness. Exactly what happened in their prayer happened in their lives. They began to speak with boldness. And we see it. The, 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 the young, the chicken fishermen are turned into confident, proud preachers, messengers of the gospel. Now, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with boldness, right? This is not a second Pentecost. This was a fresh filling, a, a renewed awareness of the Spirit's power and presence in their lives. And that happens every day. The opportunity is for that to happen every day in our lives. A fresh filling of God's presence and his power. This endowment of power for, for witnesses, they, they, they continued, right, as they, they prayed and as they were filled. And, and they felt controlled by the Holy Spirit. Boldness was the outward sign of the Holy Spirit's control in their lives. Church, listen to this. Prayer prepares us to tell the story of Jesus through our personal encounter with him. Prayer prepares us to tell the story of Jesus through our personal encounter 
with him. When we're with Jesus, we can't help but tell others about their experience. And we don't need to wait for the flame over the tabernacle to do it. We do it on ordinary days, in ordinary ways, with ordinary people, and God turns things into extraordinary. Now, I'll tell you, I wish I was as extraordinary as my wife, Chrissy, because now I'm, I'm, this is no joke. Sometimes pastors embellish a little bit. This is not an embellishment. Uh, um, her way to express her bold confidence in Jesus is every time she goes to Sam's Club to shop. I'm telling you, there's a flame above that place because when she walks through Sam's Club, I've never seen anything like it. She's, right now, she is such a presence, she brings such a presence of God into Sam's Club that pe- we can't even get through the door. The lady at the checkout or the check-in is, is asking her for prayer because she knows Chrissy will pray for her right there. I, I, get, I feel embarrassed that I get frustrated. Come on, we've got to get our shopping done. Come on, we've got to get her. And she's doing ministry because the boldness she has for Jesus and an ordinary day. Ordinary day at Sam's Club. What's your Sam's Club? It gets better once she goes in the door. It gets better. It's amazing. And, she, and so she's got a point now. She gets me excited to join her at a Sam's Club. I used to hate shopping. Now I kind of like it. Because the Holy Spirit shows up in extraordinary ways. Church, the early church evangelism was simple. It was just explaining your day to others. An ordinary day. But an ordinary day with Jesus is what? Extraordinary. Could it be that the reason people aren't coming to faith in Jesus is because we're not spending time? It begins with time with him in his presence so that we can experience his power so that we can share his goodness begins with his presence the many flames he said i promise you this i'm giving you this flame this presence so that it seeps into your heart burns white hot and moves out to the world you may not realize this but god is working powerfully around the globe today People are coming to faith in in Jesus because believers are sharing their faith. In fact, some view this as the greatest move of God ever. I have the privilege of being with so many international students and professors, PhD students, MDiv students, professors from around the globe. Christianity is rapidly advancing all over the world. China, India, Africa, Central, and South America. In general, there are only a few places where the gospel is declining or not advancing. Would you like to take a guess? I'll start, well, I'll, I'll finish with, <clears throat> with that one, then I'll, but Australia, Japan, Western Europe, and North America. De- declining. Could it be that in these places, Christianity is not advancing because believers are not praying, experiencing God's presence, receiving his power, sharing his goodness with others? Could it be? Could it be? Burning hearts draw near to God. Burning hearts experience God's power. Burning hearts share God's goodness. And finally, burning hearts transform and change. They don't stay the same. They don't stay the same. John and Kay, I'll bet, I'll bet even you in your years of ministry look forward to tr- the transformation that will happen tomorrow because of God's presence today. We change. We morph. God, God loves us the way we are. Come as you are. Come as you are, he says. Don't expect to stay that way. If you don't want to change, don't get anywhere near Jesus. That's a simple thing. And don't pray. uh, How many of you know there's a a famous, uh, now deceased, but a pastor, uh, Reverend E.V. Hill? How many know, uh, have heard of E.V. Hill? Raise your hand a little higher. I got to, okay. So uh, I've I've mentioned this before to a younger audience and not a hand went up. Uh, (laughs) E.V. Hill uh, was a well-known black preacher. And I had the privilege of hearing him uh, two times, two separate times, at, Moody, at the Moody Church years ago. And one time in the middle of his message, he stated thunderously, as he does, <clears throat> I'll, I'll try my best, prayer does not change your God. <laughs> the audience fell silent they, to a hush. He says, prayer does not change your things. Prayer does not change circumstances. Uh-huh. And then he bellowed, prayer changes you. And for the next 15 minutes, 
Pretty much all he said was three words, and he stomped around. The organ started to play. Prayer changes you. And you know in Booty Church, if you've been there, he walked around, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'll bet he pointed to every one of us individually. Prayer changes you. You, sir, and you, ma'am, prayer changes you. And I was, I, that was the simplest three-word sermon I had ever heard, and I remember it to this day, decades later. Burning hearts transform and change. They change us. Some of us fear change. We don't like change. But change at the hand of God is good change. And it comes along with the authority of Jesus' presence. Lo, I am with you when? Sometimes? Lo, I am with you always. So don't be afraid of this. Prayers of the early church changed them. They were once timid and afraid. They were hiding in a room. They were secretive, embarrassed, and ashamed. In fact, their adversaries commented in Luke, and this is so affirming to us as well. They, the, his, his accusers, their accusers noticed this. And asked, look at 13, right where I stopped reading in 13. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see with their eyes. They were ordinary men. They were what? ordinary men with no special training in scripture they also recognized them as men who had been with jesus i recognize her she's been with jesus i i recognize him i i think he's i think he's been with jesus was that the person that was was with you can can people say that about us when we walk in and through the earth on an ordinary day in ordinary ways with in, in amongst ordinary people can they say she's been with jesus and all of a sudden things get extraordinary all of a sudden you've got a sam's club on your hands and you didn't even know or anticipate it what made the difference what made the difference being with jesus his presence, it starts with his presence. We lasso that rock of Jesus through the, the rope, the lasso of prayer. And we enter into his presence. We receive his power. We have some boldness to be able to tell his story, and we're changed. We're changed. We're changed. And we keep changing. We keep getting better. We keep getting better. We keep getting in, in, in God's economy better, not in human better always. When you spend time with Jesus, he changes you. Richard Foster wrote, to pray is to change. Prayer is the central avenue God uses to transform us. The closer we come to the heartbeat of God, the more we see our need and the more we desire to be conformed, changed to Christ. Don't pray unless you want to change. Prayer pro propels us into goodness and into action. Prayer advances God's kingdom. Prayer ignites a church to move outside its walls, and prayer fans the flame of your burning heart. May it be said of each one of us, it's obvious. Chrissy's been with Jesus. It's obvious. Jim, he's been with Jesus. Some days our friends, those closest to us, might say, you know, it doesn't really look like you're walking with Jesus today. Can we, can we talk about that? They know us so well that they know our off days. The beauty of community. May it be said of each one of us, it's obvious that you, that we have been with Jesus. What follows? A white, hot, burning heart. We become mini mobile tabernacles. Skene in the Greek. We become the tabernacle of the living God. Amen? Amen? I am honored to be here to open up God's word. I'm honored to serve in some way as a connection around the country from churches to the seminary. Uh, as a pastor for 32 years, and churches are changing. Um, I chose to lose my hair over a lot of that change over the decades, but <laughs> others, if you choose other things, ulcers and whatnot, churches changing. But I can tell you, divinity schools and seminaries are changing even faster. Higher education changing even faster. 
And uh, with all these challenges, I think the opportunities have never been greater. I thank you, uh, the Evangelical Free Church, Village Church of Lincolnshire, I thank you for your friendship and support of, of Trinity for so many years. So many years. I was telling Jim as I walked in, uh, I, I spent a season where I was the executive, the founding executive director of Christ Together. It was a collaborative, is a collaborative movement of churches around, and, and uh, Village Church participated in that. And I got the opportunity, uh, this is going back 10 plus years ago, uh, to, to preach at a lot of churches up and down mainly Lake County. I never preached here. You know why? Because this church always had a bench filled with preachers that ready, filled with God's word. I kept saying, Lee, I want to come preach at your church. Lee, I want to come preach at Yeah, 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 yeah. You're fifth or sixth down the line, buddy. We've got people. And it was, it's true. You, you have a history of men and women that love Jesus. You know, so we, we are grateful for your corporate congregational support of Trinity. We're also grateful for for your individual support. Many of you are, are supportive. I met uh, Ed, the guitar player, was at the same dinner uh, that we were at in support of, of Trinity last month where, where we sat with Pastor Jim and Chris. Lots of changes. I can tell you that, that there, with, with changes, there's a sense of nervousness, maybe some anxiety. You know this in regular life as well. But there's lots of opportunities and there's an excitement that we are able now to focus on God's presence and his power through the local church and the connection through the seminary right down the road. If you have any, any questions about that, Jim is, uh, Pastor Jim is, is uh, you know, in touch with us regularly. You can reach me anytime to get, get my uh, contact you know, information. But um, it's, a, it's been a pleasure to open up God's word and be with you this morning. Will you stand for a closing benediction? Oh, song? Okay, we're going to do a song first. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Please join us for our closing song. Thank you.
Father, we direct our hearts to you, we direct our attention to you, we give you the best of our thoughts, the best of our energies, wherever we are, our circumstances in life, we commit our ordinary days to you. Thank you, Lord, for your word, and thank you for the body of Christ, the church. And now, may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and in every way. The Lord be with you all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Have a terrific day. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs>